Zimbabwe will hold presidential elections on August 23 this year. The country's electoral commission has cleared 11 candidates to contest in the polls. Nine of them are fringe candidates who stand little chance of winning. The front runners are two. One of them is Emerson Munigagwa, the country's current president who is running on a ticket of ZANU-PF the governing party, and the other one is Nelson Chamisa, the main opposition leader who is running on the ticket of the Citizens' Coalition for Change, the party he heads. This analysis will focus on these two. Let us begin with Munigagwa. He was born in 1946 in Shibani, in southern Rhodesia but his family moves to northern Rhodesia in the 1950s. He became active in anti-colonial politics as a young man while pursuing his education. In 1963, he enlisted in the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, ZANLA. ZANLA was the military wing of the Zimbabwe African National Union, ZANU, which was agitating for an end to white rule. In 1964, he was made leader of a group of fighters called the Crocodile Gang. This group launched attacks on white farms in the eastern highlands of the country. He was arrested in 1965 and was charged with bombing a train in Fort Victoria, which is now called Masvingo. He was found guilty and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. After completing his prison term, he was deported to neighboring Zambia which had attained independence from British rule in 1964. While in Zambia, Umningagwa enrolled as a student at the University of Zambia to study law. After graduating, he practiced law in the country for two years but later left to go to neighboring Mozambique to rejoin ZANU. Leaders of ZANU, which was led by Robert Mugabe, had been given permission to operate in Mozambique by the country's president, Samora Machel. The country had been colonized by Portugal but had gained independence in 1974 after a 10-year armed uprising led by Machel. Umningagwa became a central part of the ZANU operations and was made an assistant and bodyguard to Mugabe. He developed a close friendship with the ZANU leader and was included by Mugabe in the delegation that went to Britain to negotiate the country's independence at the Lancaster House Conference. When a deal for independence was reached between the British government and Zimbabwe's liberation groups, Mugabe became the country's first leader with the title Prime Minister in 1980. When he formed his first cabinet, Mugabe appointed Munigagwa to the powerful Ministry of State Security. He was later transferred to the Ministry of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. He served in that ministry until 2000 when he became Speaker of the country's parliament. He was Speaker until 2005 when he was made Minister for Rural Housing. There was widespread speculation that this was a demotion because President Mugabe was unhappy with his open campaign to succeed him as president. The bad blood between the two however thawed during the 2008 presidential election in which Mugabe faced the fiercest challenge to his rule from Morgan Shanjirai of the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC. Shanjirai had become popular across the country especially in urban areas after joining politics from labor union leadership. Munigagwa played a critical role in Mugabe's campaign and the veteran leader was re-elected. The opposition claimed there was massive rigging in favor of Mugabe and that the president had used violence and misused the state machinery to his advantage. A legal challenge in court failed and Mugabe was declared validly elected. Now in good books with the president, Munigagwa was appointed to the powerful position of minister for defense. His star continued to shine and he was made first vice president in 2014. In this senior position, he was poised to succeed Mugabe who was now advanced in age and in poor health. But there was a problem. Mugabe's wife, Grace Mugabe, who was very influential in the country's politics, did not like him. She became the head of a group called G40 which comprised of senior ruling party politicians who were angling to succeed Mugabe. Munigagwa fought back by leading another group which was called Lacoste which also wanted to succeed the president. The fight between these two powerful groups became so vicious that it was only a matter of time before the ruling party was to break irretrievably into two. In the face of this aggressive campaign against him by the president's wife, Mugabe sacked Mnangagwa as minister in 2017. Fearing arrest and possible assassination, Mnangagwa fled the country and went to neighboring South Africa. Matters came to a head after Munigagwa's sacking. From his base in South Africa, Mnangagwa enlisted the support of Zimbabwe's head of the army general Constantino Chiwenga. Chiwenga led a bloodless military coup against Mugabe. With the military taking charge of key government installations including State House, Mugabe was literally a prisoner and he was forced to resign as president by the ruling party. 
This happened in November 2017. When Mugabe was ousted, Munigagwa returned to the country and was made president by the ruling party to serve until the next election which was scheduled for the following year. When the elections were held in 2018, Munigagwa was declared the winner. He had garnered 50.8% of the vote, beating Nelson Chamisa of MDC who had garnered 44% of the vote. MDC alleged that the vote had been rigged in favor of Munigagwa and petitioned the high court to nullify the results. The petition failed and the court declared Munigagwa validly elected. Let us now focus on Nelson Chamisa. Chamisa was born on February 2, 1978 in Masvingo. He is a well-educated man who studied at the University of Zimbabwe, the biggest and most prestigious university in the country. He graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and Public Administration. He later acquired a Master's degree in International Relations and Diplomacy from the same university. Chamisa also studied governance and development at Stanford University in the United States. A self-confessed born-again Christian, he graduated in 2016 with a degree in Pentecostal theology from the Living Waters Theological Seminary in Harare. Chamisa developed interest in politics while studying at the University of Zimbabwe. He was involved in the university's student union leadership and was elected Secretary General of Zimbabwe National Students' Union, ZINASU. ZINASU was formed in 1998 and is the largest students' union in Zimbabwe. It brings together 44 students' unions in tertiary education institutions in the country. Zinasa's mandate is to lobby for the welfare of students but it has often taken part in agitation for democracy and human rights in the country. After graduating from university, Chamisa plunged into national politics and joined the opposition MDC party. His talent was soon recognized and he was elected the party's spokesman at the party's National Congress in 2006. This position put him at the center of national politics and he quickly gained popularity countrywide. But there was a price to pay for his new stature. President Mugabe was determined to retain power and had vowed never to allow MDC to take over leadership of the country. The president accused the opposition of being puppets of Western countries led by the United States and Britain which had imposed economic and travel sanctions on several ruling party leaders including the president himself. The government began a vicious crackdown on opposition figures and Chamisa was not spared. In 2007, Chamisa was waiting to board a plane at Harare International Airport to travel to Brussels, Belgium to attend an African, Caribbean, Pacific and European meeting. Suddenly, a group of armed men appeared and descended on him. They beat him up with iron bars and he fell unconscious. He was admitted to hospital with a broken skull and swollen brain. Doctors also expressed fear that he could lose one of his eyes which was badly injured. Luckily, Chamisa survived and was discharged from hospital. He resumed his political activities. Zimbabwe held presidential elections in March 2008. Although Mugabe was still popular especially in rural areas where he was regarded as a liberation hero, observers believed that Shanjirai had a good chance of unseating the president. But this did not happen. The Electoral Commission declared that Mugabe had won the poll. The opposition denounced the results and said that they were not going to recognize Mugabe as president. They alleged there had been massive rigging in the election that was mired by violence and voter intimidation. The African Union intervened and urged Mugabe and Shanjirai to hold talks to save the country from economic and political turmoil. The continental body appointed South Africa's President Thambo Mbeki to mediate the dispute. Under South Africa's mediation, Mugabe agreed to form a, a government of national unity with the opposition. Under the agreement, he was to remain president but he was to appoint Shanjirai to serve as the country's prime minister. Cabinet positions would be divided among three parties, Mugabe's ZANU-PF, Zvanjirai's MDC and a third opposition party, MDCT, which had split from MDC. Chamisa was appointed Minister of Information, Communication and Technology. He served in this capacity until the term of the National Unity Government lapsed in July 2013. Mugabe was re-elected in the 2013 elections and started yet another term despite protestations by the opposition that he had once again rigged the polls. Chamisa's star continued to shine as MDC embarked on an aggressive campaign to discredit Mugabe's government after failing to nullify his election through the courts. In July 2016, Chamisa was appointed to be one of three co-vice presidents of MDC alongside Elias Madzuri and Thakazani Kyup. Shanjirai had been ailing for several years. It was revealed that he was suffering from colon cancer. 
Despite seeking treatment from several hospitals, he died in February 2018. Following Shantarai's death, the party nominated Chamisa to be its presidential candidate to contest against Munigagwa in the election that was to be held in July 2018. He put up a vigorous campaign and expressed confidence that he would defeat the veteran leader and become one of the youngest presidents in Africa. But luck was not on Chamisa's side. When the election was concluded, the Electoral Commission declared Munigagwa the winner with 50.8% of the vote. Chamisa came second with 44% of the vote. MDC cried foul yet again, accusing the government of having rigged the election. The party filed a case at the country's high court, asking the court to nullify Munigagwa's victory and order a fresh election. Although a group of European Union observers said that the election fell short of the required threshold of credibility, the court ruled that Munigagwa was validly elected. Who is likely to be elected president between Munigagwa and Chamisa? Well, it is hard to make a conclusive prediction. Both men have strong support in certain sections of the population. The incumbent is popular in rural areas where, just like his mentor the late President Robert Mugabe, he is viewed as a liberation hero for his role in fighting for the country's independence. Chamisa is very popular in urban areas especially among the youth who are yearning for transfer of leadership from the old guard to the younger generation. He might get majority of the votes here especially in Harare, the capital city, and Bulawayo the second-largest city in the country. However, the ZANU-PF candidate has an advantage in that the turnout of voters in rural areas has historically been higher than that of urban areas where the younger population tends to have apathy on voting day. According to the Electoral Commission, slightly over 6 million Zimbabweans have registered to vote, which is an increase of over 500,000 from the last election in 2018. According to the country's electoral laws, the winning candidate must garnered over 50% of the vote. If no candidate attains this threshold, the first two leading candidates must go for a rerun within six weeks. The winner in the rerun will be the candidate who scores a simple majority. Please subscribe to this channel and share this video.